today's focus is on strategy and planning. It's my pleasure to introduce Gaby Ricci, our Programs Director, <laughs> and Julian Mitchell, an Associate of Inyatelo. I hope you enjoy your session this morning. The format of this, for those of you that have not been here before, is that it's, um, we do this for about an hour, talking about strategy and planning um, as a uh, element and a very important element of um, advancement practice. If we finish everything we've said we needed to say after 15 minutes, we'll open them up for <laughs> more questions after that. So we're going to sort of do a pretty informal um, conversation between Gabby and I and um, you know if you have a burning burning question in the middle of somewhere uh, while we're talking please put your hand up and um, we'll just try and answer as many questions and say as many um, hopefully helpful things as is possible. I think the first thing um, that maybe we need to talk about is um, what exactly in terms of the Inyatelo 10 elements of advancement do we mean by strategy and planning. I'm just interested in the room, just by a show of hands, who has an organizational strategy in place and who at least has a plan for this year. I think the role of strategy and planning as one of the elements in advancement um, is absolutely critical. The, the whole advancement approach is around how to attract resources to your organization. So having a strategy in place um, is number one the, the kind of foundation for developing an organizational case for support. So like where you're trying to get to and what do you need the money for. Um, that, I mean that's sort of the basic in, in terms of an advancement approach. Organizational planning obviously follows out of a strategy in terms of trying to work out how you're actually going to get to where you want to go. Um, so that's the very sort of nutshell answer to the question. Successful organizations always have a strategic plan. Uh, my counter argument to that is that many unsuccessful organizations also have a strategic plan. Um, so it's not the plan that makes the difference, um, but it is the use of that plan that clearly makes the difference. Do you have any thoughts on how it is that a strategic plan gets integrated into the DNA of an organization? Because that, I think, to some extent becomes the core, how you use it as opposed to, you know, the old example, everybody says you go for four days, you do a strategic planning session, and then you bind it in this incredibly beautiful cover, and you give everybody a copy, and then nobody looks at it until next year, just before you go to the next strategic planning um, session. It's how do you use that plan to ensure the success of your organization? Jillian, I think you've raised a really important point. Um, the you know, even as I sit here, and we, you know, I think all of us strategize around our work all the time. It's, it's kind of what we do. Organizations, for one, are established on the basis of a strategy. A founder will have had an idea of something they want to achieve, um, and organizations get set up on that basis. Um, but even as someone who's been involved in organizational strategy and planning for, for years, the whole, that that word of we have to do strategic planning, somehow, I don't know, there's a weird, anxious, stressful something that comes with it. Um, and I think what we tend to do is we tend to um, sort of see this as an annual thing. It's like, right, so, so when's our strategy session? When is our planning? How are we putting these together? Which needs to come first? Have we got our strategy for next year? Is it the same as last year? Have we reviewed? Have we evaluated? Do we know where we're going? Have things changed? What's going on in the environment? Um, and so it, it tends to be this sort of annual event. As far as kind of where planning sits, because that's almost the easiest thing to tackle, um, I would assume that most people in the room have a kind of annual, if, if you're program people, you would have an annual program plan, a sort of set of things that you're going to deliver with a, a defined um, uh, sort of array of resources required to deliver those. You've got deadlines, you know who's supposed to be doing stuff, and that's relatively easy to review. And you might report on that on a monthly basis, you might report on that quarterly you would certainly be reporting um, to your board on those reviews. You, you would be writing an annual report. 
Uh, so there's the constant kind of consideration, mapping what's going on outside the organization to how the organization um, is trying to get to where it's going, and if, in fact, that destination, that goal, is still the appropriate place to be heading toward. So I'm probably not answering your question at all, but um, kind of where it sits and how you bring strategy and planning into the DNA of the organization, uh, the, the question almost highlights the distinction between the implicit strategizing, strategic thinking, the implicit planning we do all the time, um, and the disjuncture between those processes and what often is this uh, kind of document that ends up sitting on a shelf. Um, I'm going to try and just paraphrase this wildly. Would I be correct in saying that what we're looking at, though, is if an organization wants to look forward and to put into place its strategy, there are a few things that you're going to have to know in order to be able to build this. Firstly, it's absolutely based on your vision and mission because it's the three, the three things that you, you have to know. You have to know who you are. You have to know what it is that you do. And you have to know the greater cause that you serve. A strategy plan certainly has a two-pronged thrust. It's an external gazing so that you understand what is going on in your environment and you understand the greater cause that you serve. And it's also internal because it's going to be the basis for that very planning that gabe has been talking about, about how you actually put into place the steps in order to be able to visualize or realize, I guess, the vision of what it is you're going to do. You know, often we use strategy plans as a kind of whipping point. It's like how to whip people into place when, in fact, what you should be using it to do is articulate how you motivate people and how you draw people into being part of your organization because I think that's probably a very important part of how you kind of structure it into the DNA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, I mean, you've raised a couple of um, very important points around who gets involved in, in, in strategy, who has those discussions, who drives the development and the review of strategy. Um, I think what I'm also realizing, and you know, we fortunately life is a, an ongoing process of learning, um, is the, that there is a difference between one's organizational strategy around where you're going and how you're going to get there. There's also an internal strategy um, around what sorts of things you put in place to be able to um, effect and implement the kind of programmatic work you want to do and the planning that needs to go into that. Um, and I think we often tend to either forget about the internal stuff, which I think is where a lot of organizational staff do get involved. How do we work internally to service the external mission um, and the external strategic goals? The issue around who, who sets strategy, who discusses strategy, where does it sit in an organization? Um, are there a lot of organizational directors here, people who are basically are driving their organizations? A few, yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, you will be able to speak hopefully in, in a little while about your experiences and what role you play. In my experience, a founder director has, um, is the key driver in an organizational strategy. So where your director is the founder, they play a very strong role in... The, it's just a, a passion. It's, it's almost like a, it's a DNA thing. Um, that founder will have come with, with a, a clear sense of how they want to tackle and address a, a social need, a challenge. Um, I think any uh, director that comes in after that would be working with what exists already. And when an organization is set up to achieve a particular strategy, um, anyone following from the founder director kind of slots into the flow and, and works off that basis. The reason I'm raising this is because I think that the role of the board in setting strategy is an interesting one. And again, in my experience where we work with a founder director, the role of the board is not as strong as it would be when um, the founder director has moved on and there are now other directors um, in place. Would it be fair to say that the strategic plan or the strategy thinking for that and for the hub 
has really been the basis and articulates and clarifies for people, one, what your values are, but secondly, also helps people to make choices about the things that, you know, you can't do everything. So it helps the organization to make choices about the strategies or the particular activities that you choose because you know you can deliver on them and because you know that you know exactly what it is that you want to achieve. You want to achieve a hub where lots of people can come and um, actually participate um, in a, a, a lot of informational moments about advancement. Um, but, of course, you could do 20,000 things to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you know what your strategy is, then you know what you cherry-pick off the top as the things that you know you'll be successful at as well. Because you, part of being um, really well strategized is that you know exactly what it is that you're going to need in order to be successful. I mean, some of the, the, the questions that we are asking ourselves um, moving into this new space next year... Um, are not only around what do other what are other organizations needing? What do people need of the space? What do people need um, as a space, a venue, a sort of almost virtual conceptual space? Um, how do we develop what we are already providing um, in the hub as, as part of a... A, a strategy that Iñatelo seeks to employ in strengthening civil society? Um, I kind of want to just go backwards a little bit. Um, and I think from the way we've been talking about strategy and planning, and often I think the way we do speak about strategy and planning, we, we think of it or we talk about it as a stepped process. It's that, you know, you, mm. you, you do this and then you do the next thing and then you have a plan and then you put the goals and objectives and then you put the monitoring and evaluation, and then you go and do the work. Um, in real life, of course, the world is not completely divided into doers and thinkers, and the one does their work, and then the other one goes to do it. It's a lot more messy than that, a lot more messy than that. And I think strategic thinking is a very messy process. I, mean, I, I think for many organizations, if, if you're going to – I wouldn't like anybody to go away here thinking that there's a framework that you just simply plug in and then your organization can do it. Um, part of what happens is, you know, there's a saying that says that sometimes you've got to redesign the plane while you're actually flying it. And I think that that's what happens in organizations. It's the action of actually doing the work is sometimes what is going to inform how you change or how you tweak what your strategy is. Doing something is sometimes an even more important step but not by a lot, than thinking about something. <laughs> uh, I mean, I do, I often wonder how, as, as um, public benefit organizations, we do actually get our stuff together in, in terms of all these formal processes. You know, and I alluded to the fact that we already passed what would have been an ideal mid-year review. We, we kind of passed that point, and we're heading into when we need to be doing our, our kind of annual um, review for next year and, you know, putting things in place. So um, I think it is a real challenge. Uh, you know, Inyatelo, for one, is a, is a fairly well-resourced organization and we struggle just because of time and delivery and staffing capacity and so on. So I hope that we'll get a chance to um, chat just now about um, how organizations do manage to put... Um, the, the sort of formal processes in place around um, strategizing and reviewing strategy, at what point you bring your boards in, um, what kinds of roles um, various boards do play in, in that process of working through what an organization um, needs to be doing to get to where it needs to be going. I think what I'd like to do is... Um, open up the floor mm. to some questions. Um, uh, we really would like to give as many people as possible a chance to ask a question. So can I ask, I'm sorry I have to ask this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it anyway. Could you be quite concise about the question and not largely over-contextualize it? Um, I have one question over here. I come from a small organization. Uh, we're in that second stage you talked about where founders started things, and now I've taken over and are kind of moving things onto that next step. Um, and I'm not sure that our board and I understand their role in setting the strategy of our organization. And my view is that it's tending to get driven by 
our staff planning meetings once a year. That's actually what's heading us in the direction we're going. And how do I um, explain to the board what I see as their role, what do you see as their role, and how should they be implementing that? It is a process that you, that you will have to grip and be quite active about. So have your own board management strategy in place. Um, because, bo I th yeah, I think uh, there's so many ways that boards can really mess organizations up, either by being too um, operationally involved and too controlling around how an organization does what it, it's supposed to do. Um, they can be so hands-off that you actually can't get any decision-making or buy-in or you can't access your board members. Um, I suppose the ideal board is the one that is there to open the doors to wealth, um, that are willing to work, um, and that do understand um, the more strategic role that they play. Not even necessarily in terms of um, setting organizational strategy, but at least being engaged enough to understand what the proposed strategy is, where it's looking a little off, where they can actually interrogate it quite, um, you know, with thought and, and care. Um, but it can, be, it can be quite rough. I suppose um, Inyatelo's board is relatively, um, is at a bit of a remove uh, in the sense of being uh, very closely involved. They obviously know what's going on. There's very close contact in that conversational way between our director and board members on an ongoing basis. Um, but they, they don't play a massive role um, in a setting strategy. They do play that really important role in monitoring. I find my board's a bit of a circus, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, it's probably because I'm running it. But I mean, that's, you know, the meetings, I mean. But um, just if there's any kind of effective strategies for actually how people report to the boards. Is it documents? Is it, I don't know, I'm missing something big. In all honesty, and I'm, I, this is not because I'm fobbing anybody off, but in all honesty, the board question I'm beginning to realize is a massive one. And it's also one that's become um, a concern um, because I think more and more one is realizing that the way we have constructed our boards, many of our nonprofits, is really not, we haven't done it in a thoughtful fashion. We've done it because we like a name. We've done it because the time was running out to be able to put in the names of your board. And don't raise your hands, but how many of us have actually gone and said, no, please, won't you just be on our board? All you have to do is come to three meetings, and you don't have to do very much more than that, and it's really not a lot of work. And we shoot ourselves in the foot because that's not what you want your board to do. You want your board to be filled with people who are engaged, who believe in what you do, and who really can open doors for you, and who can also, I say this all the time, your board has to be composed of, it's the WWW of boards. They, you have to have people who are willing to work. You have to have people who have wealth or have access to wealth and are willing to share it with you. And you need people who have wisdom. Okay? Those are the, the, the three Ws you need on your board. Um, it really is the job of the CEO to kind of try and change that around. The ringmaster really is going to have to bring the circus under control. Um, so it's And how you report to that board and how you work with that board really is going to be something I think that's going to surface out of how much or how the interaction between the organization and the leadership of that board actually takes place. Uh, mine isn't a question. It's just a real enthusiasm for the in your teller space and in a sense articulating our need. We would love a space where we could have really good virtual com international virtual conversations and national virtual conversations. If we could speak to organizations in the States that do something you know, similar to us or any other part of the world and indeed nationally in a, in a space that's not um, funny voices from a microphone in the middle of the table, but a real good virtual environment, that would be fantastic. It's not a question. I just wanted to share our process um, just to be more uh, focused. So at the beginning of the year, we had a strategy session with the board members, and it was limited because it was in January. A lot of people were in December, so we were actually just the two founders, my husband and I, 
plus four board members. And we actually did the best thing is we got a business coach, external business coach. And she had to produce a, a, a strategic planning that could fit into a one page. That was a goal. So there was only five strategic um, objectives. On the, uh, the SWOT analysis, it was five points on each. Everything was onto five, and it had to fit onto a one page. So that was amazing because it was an outside person, and she would just facilitate the discussion. And the first part of the morning, it was a complete mess. At lunchtime, she had a nervous breakdown. She said, I can't <laughs> handle your board. They're completely useless. And <laughs> <laughs> so we just say, well, that's why we ask you to come. You need to be more, more, much more directive. <laughs> and the second, the second half of the day, she would just say, okay, now we need to go to work. And she was much more directive. And at the end of the day, a week later, we had a strategic planning that could fit onto the one page. The next step is she did a team alignment. That's when we brought the entire staff, e everybody, into one room. And then she, she did a session where she aligned the team, not by saying, this is what we're going to do, but she was much more interactive by bringing everybody's opinion into it and does it fit into the strategy of the, of the, of the organization. And I think what we didn't do, the third step, like you were saying, you were asking how many steps, is the KPIs. How are we going to evaluate our, our goals. So now when I go to a board meeting, I take those five strategic objectives and I report per objective. Okay, the first one, that's what we've done towards the first one, but nobody given me uh, a performance indicators. We, they don't really know how to evaluate me. So that's what we're missing, I think, the, the step. So I just wanted to share that, if it can help that's anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, our process is, is our, our format is so different. Um, I'm with Save the Children Fund Cape, um, which is a big name. It's a very big international name. It's an en enormously um, respected organization throughout the world. Um, there is a small difference. We inherited, you speak about inheritance and, and how you take over something that's, she ain't heavy, she's broke. She's not only heavy and she's also broke. Um, our organization is a totally independent Save the Children. It is not linked to Save the Children um, South Africa, which is now getting established in the Gauteng region and or the rest of the world. They have nothing to do with us except we do carry their name. So we don't have a board. Um, we don't have to jump through the hoops for the board. We have our own committee and we are a totally volunteer organization. There's not a single member of our team who gets paid. We don't have a fundraiser. We don't have a secretary. We do it ourselves, which does mean that 98% of what we raise goes directly into our program, which is our focus is on nutrition. And we have now branching out into working with preschools. These ladies here, um, they're helping us with um, getting a pre particular preschool that is in a very bad p condition um, registered and evaluated and so on. So the difficulty for us is um, while we have this marvelous name, we have to do it all uh, by ourselves. We have a, a, a committee of volunteers and uh, there are about three of us who actually do the work. Um, so that's, that's our difficulty. I just want to say that I appreciate all this going away for weekends and strategy <laughs> plannings and getting in uh, facilitators. Um, I'm so impressed. But it will never happen. We, we can't do that. But um, I, I appreciate the time to come and talk to you, everybody. Thank you. I think you have just sold yourself incredibly short. If you are a functioning organization, and let me tell you that if you are staffed entirely by volunteers, you may not realize that you have a strategy in place that people are adhering to and that people are being inspired by, but you absolutely do. Otherwise, you couldn't do this. You wouldn't have these volunteers. Your committee wouldn't know what to do. That you absolutely know what it is that you're doing, that you're helping a particular school, and that you know that there are processes and programs that you will have to do in order to make that work means that you have a living, breathing strategy. It may not be on a piece of paper, but you have it. In fact, you probably are more inspirational to us than the other way around. So thank you.
we're going to end off now. Um, this doesn't mean the discussion comes to an end. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of us, all of us, no, no, all of you, um, for being here. Um, thank you for allowing us to talk to you. Um, thank you for the questions. A special thank you to our experts, Gaby and Jillian. Thank you to Cape Town TV for the recording. Uh, thank you for your active participation. If you'd like to see Funding Finder, please join me in the Resources Center for a cup of coffee and a talk. Mm -hmm.